بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه بارك وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي Now again I'm Dr. Mudassir Shahbaz Associate Professor Sahara Medical College Narawal In the previous lecture online we have discussed about the anterior compartment of the leg and during our discussion we have seen the fascia superficial deep fascia of the leg compartments which are made by the intermuscular septa of the leg and also superficial veins of the legs cutaneous nerve supply of the anterior compartment of the leg and muscles of the anterior compartment of the leg now today we are going to discuss about the neurovascular component of the anterior compartment of the leg and while we were studying before starting open up Uh, your book and if uh, you have atlas with you if you open the popliteal fossa there you will see that popliteal artery was dividing into two branches it is starting from the adductor hiatus and it is running down deeper structure and its terminal branches are the anterior and posterior and uh, one of the branches the lateral uh, pruning artery anterior tibial artery posterior tibial artery and the lateral artery so two main branches anterior tibial artery and posterior tibial artery artery because as you are seeing the posterior compartment of the leg is the bigger one so it needs a larger artery while in the anterior compartment is a smaller as compared to the posterior compartment so it needs a smaller vessel and the artery the anterior tibial artery originating while originating in the <coughs> uh, popliteal fossa it has to move to the anterior compartment and this will be accomplished when it will pass anterior in, it, into the anterior compartment through a foramina in the interosseous membrane in the upper part of the interosseous membrane here you can see the anterior tibial artery entering into the anterior compartment through the foramina in the sciatic a, a hole in the sciatic uh, interosseous membrane in the upper part of the interosseous membrane so here is the origin and then the entry of the anterior tibial artery into the anterior compartment the posterior tibial artery is running down here and here is a branch of the posterior tibial artery that is the fibular artery on the lateral side so anterior tibial artery so what we have seen that it's a smaller terminal branch of the popliteal artery arises at the lower border of popliteal muscle so popliteal muscle has is a marker where this starts the uh, anterior tibial artery and posterior tibial artery it passes forward into the anterior compartment through opening in the upper part of interosseous membrane that we have seen and then it descends on the interior surface of interosseous membrane accompanied by the deep peroneal nerve so here is the point that this deep peroneal nerve has a very important relation with the anterior tibial artery and at as the anterior tibial artery is running down on the anterior surface of interosseous membrane it means that it will be lying deep deep under the muscles of the anterior compartment of the leg now what we see as i have mentioned in the previous slide in this slide that this artery is accompanied by the deep peroneal nerve and it is lying anterior surface of the interosseous membrane so its important relation with the deep peroneal nerve should be understood completely and in this slide we see 
how this is air this is present so here we see that the uh, uh, the posterior anterior tibial artery and then its relation with the peroneal nerve so what we see that in the upper third the anterior tibial nerve means that is the relation of the uh, uh, to the artery of the deep peroneal nerve is the other name in given in some books is the anterior tibial nerve so it is the deep peroneal nerve which is having in its upper one third in upper one third lateral to the artery the nerve is lateral to the artery then in the middle ter- third in front of the artery and in the lower third it returns lateral to the artery the deep peroneal nerve if you have opened up the atlas and you see the compartment of the leg anterior compartment of the leg and open up the diagram which is uh, about the anterior tibial artery they will you, see, you will see that in the upper third the nerve is lateral to the artery and in the middle third the nerve is anterior to the artery in the lower third it returns back lateral to the artery the deep peroneal nerve at the lower part of the leg the artery crosses in front of ankle and continues as a do- dorsal spedis artery and then the branches of the anterior tibial artery are given which are on the uh, which will be uh, the tibial recurrent and also the muscular branches and malleolar branches so what we see is that one of the two terminal branches of the popliteal artery is the anterior tibial artery it will supply the structures in the anterior compartment of the leg and perforate uh, and perforating branches of the lateral compartment and the midpoint between the two malleoli that is medial and lateral malleolus it will enter into the dorsum of the foot and it will be it will be renamed as dorsalis spedis artery and then at the end it will give medial and lateral malleolar branches so branches of the anterior tibial artery we can appreciate here posterior tibial recurrent then is the anterior tibial recurrent then will be the muscular branches then will be the L, L, L lower down lower down will be the medial and lateral uh, malleolar arteries very simple so it means that what we understand actually is that these recurrent branches anterior and posterior tibial recurrent branches they will take part in the anastomosis around the knee joint with the genicular branches of the popliteal artery genicular branches of popliteal artery they will form the anastomosis around the knee joint it's very important anastomosis uh, around the knee joint and similarly anterior malleolar anterior medial malleolar posterior medial malleolar branches they will be taking part in the anastomosis around the ankle joint also it is very important to understand so here we why, why i have chosen this diagram because to show the relations of the artery here is a, it is lying deep over the interosseous membrane covered by the muscles of the anterior compartment it's uh, laterally is the this the muscle that is the here is the tibial anterior then is the here will be the extensor digitorum and this will be uh, the muscle that the extensor hollis is longus and here is the nerve neurovascular bundle lying posteriorly is the interosseous membrane this is the tibia and this is fibula so neurovascular here is more well explained that here you can see the artery and lateral to the artery is the uh, nerve deep peroneal nerve so 
this cross section should be uh, either at the upper part one third of the leg, leg or lower one third of the leg because this nerve here nerve is lying lateral to it anteriorly is the uh, muscles anterior uh, tibialis anterior and uh, the extensor digitorum this muscle in the anterior and lateral to this is the other uh, the veins of the legs deep veins of the legs so posteriorly is the interosseous membrane so by drawing this diagram we will uh, we are able to understand the relations of the neurovascular bundle and its location the compartment of the leg then is a common uh, peroneal nerve it's a branch of uh, common peroneal nerve is branch of sciatic nerve a sciatic nerve branch in the popliteal fossa and from the popliteal it turns laterally uh, winds around the lateral aspect of neck of fibula it's a dangerous position because if you feel your leg laterally you can feel the head of head of fibula it's just like as in the upper limb we have seen that the ulnar nerve was passing behind the medial malleolus so that area becomes dangerous for the ulnar nerve if medial malleolus medial malleolus medial condyle of the humerus is damaged it will damage the ulnar nerve here the nerve is very much closely related to the head of fibula which you can feel laterally and if there is a fracture of this upper part of the fibula head of fibula so how much chances are there that the common peroneal nerve would be damaged and then it is divided immediately into the superficial peroneal nerve and the deep the deep peroneal nerve the superficial one is the musculocutaneous type means it will supply the muscles and then it will become cutaneous but the deep peroneal nerve is named as anterior tibial nerve or deep peroneal nerve it will supply the muscles of the anterior compartment of the leg so deep peroneal nerve is terminal branch of common peroneal nerve it's arising from the substance of peroneus longus muscle which is a muscle of lateral compartment of the leg and on the lateral side of the neck of the fibula enters the anterior compartment by piercing the anterior facial septum so it will pierce the anterior facial septum and it will enter into the anterior compartment of the leg uh, and it is uh, enters the anterior compartment piercing the anterior facial septum descends deep to the extensor digitorum longus first lying lateral then anterior and finally lateral to the anterior tibial artery so same i have shown you in the previous diagram relations of the deep peroneal nerve especially with the anterior tibial artery and passes deep to the extensor retinoculum then it will give muscular branches and articular branches to the ankle joint obviously so these important relations of the the peroneal nerve uh, the question can be made by this and this these all are lying deep to the muscles of the anterior compartment of the leg whenever the common peroneal nerve the, is uh, damaged around the neck of uh, fibula that will cause the damage to the muscles of the anterior compartment and uh, so the dorsiflexion of the foot is almost impossible and then what will be the result the result that the uh, the plantar flexors of the foot will become hyperactive and they will cause the foot to drop down so the heel of uh, is you are standing on your foot toes and not on the uh that is the uh, heel so it obviously then it will while you are walking you have noted that is the first thing which you place over the ground is the heel of the foot while you are taking a step ahead and for that purpose you have you have to dorsiflex the foot 
to let your heel strikes on the ground but if the anterior compartment muscles they are damaged by damage of the deep peroneal nerve or common peroneal nerve you will be unable to dorsiflex the foot while you are putting your foot ahead to take a step so what will happen that then the walking will be interfered you can cannot walk and the uh, patient has can flick the foot outwards while walking now uh, known known as eversion flick now this is the foot drop foot drop which will be caused by the damage to the common peroneal nerve or deep peroneal nerve now we come to the dorsum of the foot is the dorsum of the foot skin superficial fascia deep fascia and the modification of deep fascia is the retinaculum the structures we will see in the dorsum of foot are superior and inferior extensor retinacula long flexor tendons of extensor digitorum extensor digitorum brevis extensor expansion just like extensor expansion here's extensor expansion just like the extensor expansion in the hand on the uh, um, back of the hand there is the extensor extensor similar extensor expansion is here then is the dorsalis pedis artery will enter into the foot then the there will be dorsal venous plexus and we have seen before in the first lecture that on the medial side will be formed great saphenous vein on the lateral side will uh, we, uh, there will be formation of uh, the small saphenous vein the difference was that the media um, the great saphenous vein form anterior to the medial medullus while the small saphenous vein is formed posterior to the lateral malleolus and the all the tendons here we see they are covered by the synovial sheath so to minimize the friction while they are entering under the retinaculum into the foot so we'll see what we see first is the dorsalis pedis artery and here we can see that it is coming from above here the foot uh, the big toe has been dorsal flexed and so the extensor hallis is longer tendon become prominent and if we see that just lateral to the tendon is the dorsalis pedis artery which we can feel and it is extending forward forward on the dorsum of foot up to this area which is the head of the metatarsals of the foot just posterior to the head of the metatarsal of the foot and it is accompanied by the deep peroneal nerve which is on the lateral side of the artery now it is entering into the foot supplying the two muscles and here this area will be supplied cutaneous supply of this area first web first to big to and the second to the web here is supplied by the deep peroneal nerve so here we see the retinacula that is the superior extensor retinacula which is thickening of the deep fascia of the leg and the inferior extensor retinaculum i have discussed these attachments of these retinacula in the previous lecture because we have to understand the passage of the structure and here you can see this is tibial anterior this is the tendon of extensor hallucis and lateral to extensor hallucis is, is the dorsalis pedis artery and lateral to this is the extensor digitorum longus the peroneus tertius lies deep to it and lateral to it it will move towards the metatarsal of the fifth toe peroneus tertius but in in this diagram we are seeing what this is extensor hallucis brevis and uh, we will see the tendons of extensor digitorum brevis extensor digitorum brevis 
So, extensor retinocula, superior and an inferior extensor retinoculum that you have seen before. So, superior one, which is attaching to the, mm, the lower end of the tibia and fibula, lower part of the anterior border of tibia and lower part of the anterior border of uh, fibula. <coughs> and function is to stabilize the tendons while they are functioning. Inferior extensor retinoculum is attached by the stem to the non-articular part of superior surface of calcaneum on the lateral side here you can see and medially it is attached to the median malleolus and to the plantar upon rosis inferior band. So dorsal speedus artery we have seen that it is a continuation of the anterior tibial artery while it is passing under the extensor retinoculum and it begins in front of ankle joint at a point midway between the two malleoli and it runs forward on the dorsum of foot accompanied by the two veiny combatants of the dorsal venous arch and uh, it ends at the proximal end of the first introsious space. The artery turns towards the sole between two heads of the first dorsal introsious muscle to anastomose with the end of the plantar arch. So here it will move inside, passing between the first dorsal intrachia into the plantar side of the foot to take part in the formation of plantar arch dorsal uh, dorsal speedus artery. Here it is piercing inside and taking part in the formation of plantar arch. That we will see when we will look at the uh, <coughs> plantar side of the foot. So branches, there will be medial lateral uh, tarsal branches of the medial and lateral tarsal branches and distal to the ankle joint, joint of the tarsus, anastomosis around the ankle joint. There is an arcuate artery, arcuate means arc like, arcuate artery, arc like, here is arc like. Uh, opposite the base of the metatarsal. So here are the heads of the baton tarsal, here are the base of the metatarsals. Laterally in an arched course, therefore it is called as arcuate archery. Second, third and fourth dorsal metatarsal arteries. Second, third and fourth dorsal metatarsal arteries. Fourth dorsal metatarsal gives off a branch which supply the lateral side of the little toe. The fourth one is which is supplying the lateral side of the fifth toe little toe or fifth toe so here is the main branch that is the here is the genicular branches tarsal branches which is supply the tarsal bones and the ankle joint but here is the arcuate artery so we have seen that dorsal spidus artery is taking part in the anastomosis of the plantar side by its first branch it where it terminates and before that it is giving an arcuate, arcuate artery through which the second, third and fourth dorsal metatarsal arteries they are originating. And they again they will divide into two branches. First the first dorsal metatarsal artery arises from the termination dorsal this one is the first dorsal metatarsal artery immediately before it pierces the first intrusion space and it runs forward on the first daughter intrusion muscle divided into two branches medial branch and lateral branch so here it is dividing into medial and lateral branch which will obviously supply the uh, adjacent side of the uh, uh, the toe the phalanxes the toes First plantar metatarsal artery arises from the end of the other branches plantar digital common so common and plantar digital arteries will be formed and they will be supplied. Then is the extensor digitorum brevis muscle. Extensor digitorum brevis muscle. Here is it lying the extensor digitorum brevis muscle arises from the anterior part of the dorsal surface of the calcaneum okay stem of the infer inferior extensor retinoculum four tendons 
the most medial is the extensor horis brevis then inserted into the base of proximal phalanx of the big toe remaining three tendons they are second third and fourth toe second third and fourth toe and they are all supplied by the deep pronin nerve so action will be extension of meter meter tarso phalangeal joint of the medial four lobes uh, toes extension of the interphalangeal joint of second third and fourth so this is the main action of the extensor digitorum muscle brevis is a brevis one and here one thing to note is that the most medial side is called as extensor hallucis brevis some anatomy is in some books the extensor hallucis brevis is considered as a separate muscle but in the, some books they say that extensor hallucis brevis is not a separate muscle it is actually the most medial part of the extensor digitorum brevis muscle so here we see extensor digitorum brevis again the slide showing its uh, origin anterior part of the upper part of the calcaneum and from the inferior extensor retinaculum four tendons into proximal phalanxes of the big toe and longest tendon of the second third and fourth not the fifth one second third and fourth big second third and fourth extensor digitorum brevis it extends the toes at the metacarpal phalangeal joint extensor hallucis is, is considered to be the a part of most medial part of the extensor digitorum brevis so region will be the same and the action will be extension of the uh metatarsophalangeal joint of the big toe and the nerve supply is the deep peroneal nerve so here are shown the extensor hallucis brevis separately and these are the tendon of extensor digitorum brevis some says that this is one muscle some says that this is a separate muscle and here is shown the neurovascular bundle showing the branches of the neurovascular bundle. here in this diagram have been shown the muscles of the dorsum of the foot so we have seen the muscles and nerves of the dorsum of the foot and now inshallah uh, we will discuss the uh, other compartments of the leg and uh, we have seen very important points that we have learned in this uh, the in uh, one of the lecture inshallah next time we will discuss as a whole the clinicals of the legs when we are completed uh, clinicals of the hip joint clinicals of the knee joint clinicals of the anterior compartment of the uh, leg and others one of the clinical we have discussed in this chapter that is the uh, uh, foot drop we have discussed in this other clinicals related with the uh, arteries and nerves we will discuss later on and inshallah and uh, again try to palpate your own dorsal spedus artery on your foot and then you will be able to understand try to feel the tendons and then inshallah next time we will see the clinicals of all the compartments bundle of thanks allah hafiz allah be with you all people allah hafiz